وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى this is our eighth episode and our seventh lesson إن شاء الله تعالى in this episode or in this lesson إن شاء الله تعالى I'm going to be speaking about أحكام المرأة في الصوم jurisprudent rulings pertaining to women whilst fasting in the month of Ramadan. Some issues related to women, insha'Allah ta'ala. These issues that I'm insha'Allah going to discuss in this uh, episode or this lesson, insha'Allah ta'ala, it is obligatory on every single woman to know it very well. It's from the masail alati yajibu an tata'allam al-mar'atu jayida fi shahri Ramadan. It is from those issues that the women have to know very well regarding the month of Ramadan. And from those issues is uh, uh, purification regarding menstruation and postnatal bleeding. And so here are, inshallah ta'ala, some of the things that I'm going to be discussing in this episode or in this lesson, inshallah ta'ala. Number one is, uh, if the woman purifies herself, if the woman purifies herself and then she sees she sees the yellow the yellowish or the brownish discharge after she has purified herself can she pray or can she not uh, pray or can she fast or can she not fast that is inshallah ta'ala what I'm going to respond to based on the hadith uh, hadith um, um Atiyah radiyallahu ta'ala anha, which is uh, collected and found in Sunani Abi Dawood. She said, Kunna la na'uddu al-kudrata wa sufrata ba'da tuhri shay'a. We never used to regard the yellowish and the brownish discharge anything whatsoever after we purified ourselves. So the yellowish and the brownish discharge that the women see after they've purified themselves, yani after they Hayd has come to an end and they've purified themselves. The yellowish and the brownish discharge that they see, it doesn't prevent them from fasting. I mean, they can carry on fasting and they, they can also pray. It has no weight whatsoever. The second point, inshallah ta'ala, is uh, A woman purifies herself um, in the day of Ramadan. I mean, after Fajr, she purifies herself. What should she do? What is upon her is عَلَيْهَا الْإِمْسَاكُ فِي بَقِيَّةِ يَوْمِهَا The remaining of the day she should withhold from eating and drinking and, and, and having any sexual intercourse. The reason for this is because احتراما للوقت She should honor this time. This time is sacred. She should, she should hold herself from eating or drinking or having any sexual intercourse. Even that though she purified herself at Naa Nahari Ramadan, daytime, yani after Fajr, it is upon her, uh, fi yomiha lil allati bil And those days that she has missed, including that same day that she was holding her fast after Dhuhr, she should bring it back, inshallah ta'ala, and fast. She should what? She should bring it back. So the withholding here, inshallah ta'ala, is to honor the time uh, and it's very vital that she does that. The third point, inshallah ta'ala, is إِذَا رَأَتِ الطُّهْرَ قَبْلَ الْفَجْرِ The woman sees that she has become clean and she's purified before Fajr. Yani before Fajr, she sees that she is pure. What should she do in this situation? يَلْزَمُهَا الصَّوْمُ وَلَا مَانِعَ مِنْ تَأْخِيرِهَا She should fast and there is no harm in her delaying her purification until Fajr. And until Fajr, even if the Salah, the Adhan goes off, it's not a problem 
for her to delay the showering and do the ghusl. But she's pure now. She has to fast. But she's not allowed to delay it until, uh, until Fajr leaves. Because the salah is upon her to pray. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban, kitaban mawquta. And the same issue is with, is with regards to the junub, the janaba. A man has sexual intercourse with his wife uh, in Ramadan at night time with his wife. And he sleeps after doing wudu, of course. He goes to sleep, but he doesn't do the ghusl that is upon him. And then Fajr comes in, there is no harm upon him, inshallah ta'ala, according to the strongest opinion. There is no harm upon him. But what he has to do is, or what she has to do also is, is do their ghusl before Fajr leaves, inshallah ta'ala. The second point, inshallah ta'ala, that I want to speak about is, مَا حُكْمُ ذَوْقِ الطَّعَامِ فِي نَهَارِ رَمَضَانِ وَالْمَرْأَةُ صَائِمَةِ What is the ruling for the woman to taste the food whilst she's fasting in Ramadan? She's cooking food, she wants to taste it, she wants to see it. Is she allowed to do this? Yes, she can, there's no problem. She can taste it with her tongue. Uh, as long as she doesn't uh, take sips and doesn't drink it and eat it, but she can taste it, there is no harm in this regard. And the evidence for that is that which Ibn Abi Shayba and Bayhaqi narrated Isnaduhu Hassan on the authority of uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas. That Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he himself said, La ba'sa in tata'ama sa'imu. He said, La ba'sa, there is no harm. And yet, tata'ama sa'imu bi shay'i ya'ni al marakata wa nahuha. He said, There is no harm in the person who's fasting uh, to taste the soup in which they are cooking. In another word in which Bukhari brought it mu'allaqan fi sahihi, he brought that he said, la ba'sa an yatata'ama al-qidra aw al-shay'a. So it's not a harmful for the person to taste um, it with their tongue, as long as they don't take it all in and eat it and drink it and whatnot. But to taste the food, whether you, the salt is correct or not, there is no harm in that regard, inshaAllah ta'ala. The third point that I want to speak about uh, is خروج المرأة للتراويح والعيد The women going out for Salatul Taraweeh and the women going out for the uh, Eid prayer inshaAllah ta'ala It is permissible ويجوز النساء حضور المساجد إذا أمنت الفتنة It is permissible for the women to come out to the masjid if there are uh, safety and there's no fear of any trials or tribulations. There's no fear of fitna from them and for them. And this is the based on the hadith of uh, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he said, لا تمنع إماء الله مساجد الله. Do not prevent the women from the houses of Allah. يعني the masjid. Don't prevent the women from the, from the masjid. Um, and this was the act of the pious predecessors. And if they went out to the masjid, they used to observe the, the manners that was required from them. <coughs> uh, and their husbands would not prevent them from uh, going to the masjid. It was narrated uh, that the wife of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, she used to go out to the masjid. كانت امرأة لعمراء one of Umar's wives, she used to go to the masjid تشهد صلاة الصبح She used to participate in the Salat al-Subh, the Fajr prayer والعشاء, and she used to participate in the Salat al-Isha في الجماعة, in the congregation She used to come to the masjid فقيل لها, it was one day said to her لما تخرجين, why are you always going out to the prayer in congregation, in the masjid Fajr, al-Isha, why are you doing that? وَقَدْ تَعْلَمِينَ And you know very well أن عمر يكره ذلك عمر does not like this You know he doesn't like you doing this وَيَغَارُ And عمر is jealous of you going out Now we have to ponder here and contemplate uh, that عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه is a jealous man does not like his wife walking outside and being somewhere else um, And this was the act of the pious predecessors that they were jealous for their wives they didn't like their wives doing particular things uh, and nowadays we have, well, in Asaf al-Shadid, many men whose wives are on social media, يعني, they are on YouTube, they are on social media platforms. 
And they are very happy with that. They will promote their wives with no hijab. They would push the idea. They would even uh, um, do videos with them. This, without a doubt, is a man who lacks ghira, protective jealousy over his family. And that man, as the Prophet told us, وسلم, the man that doesn't have ghira, is not going to smell the fragrance of Jannah. He's not going to smell it. And it's a shaming to see a Muslim person following the non-Muslims in this particular act, thinking he is a progressed Muslim, thinking that he is an intellectual, uh, uh, you know, developed, um, advanced, smart individual. But in truth, all that person is is a dim-witted, ignorant individual who doesn't have the basic instinct that even animals have. Even animals are protective over their spouses and their partners. Ala kulli hal Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu had jealousy in this issue and did not like his wife to go out. So she asked, when that was said to her, she asked, she said, وَمَا يَمْنَعُهُ What is preventing Umar radiallahu anhu and يَمْنَعِنِي that he prevents me from going to the masjid. What is stopping Umar from preventing me from going to the masjid? قَالَ يَمْنَعُهُ What's stopping him from allowing you to go to the masjid is قَوْلُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم The statement of the Prophet is preventing him from it. Which is لَا تَمْنَعُوا إِمَاءَ اللَّهِ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ Do not prevent the women from the masjid. يعني Umar is jealous, does not like you going out, but he can't stop you. The reason why he can't stop you is because the statement of the Prophet stands, which is لا تَمْنَعُوا إِمَاءَ اللَّهِ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ أَخْرَجَهُ الْبُخَارِي Another benefit that we take from it is a husband is not allowed to stop his wife from going to the masjid if she wants to. However much, je however jealous he is, and however upset he is with that, he has no rights to stop her from it, and she can go. But this is what is upon the sisters to take on board uh, these etiquettes and these manners if they want to go out. And I'm going to mention two, inshallah ta'ala. The first one is, أَن تَكُونَ مُتَسَتِّرَةً مُتَحَجِّبَةً غَيْرَ مُتَبَرِّجَةً وَلَا مُتَطَيِّبَةً the woman should make sure that she is covered when she's going out to the Salat of Taraweeh. And when she's going to the Eid prayer, she has to make sure that she is fully covered and she doesn't place any perfume on herself. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, any woman, asabat bakhuran, she places perfume on herself. فَلَا تَشْهَدْنَ مَعَنَ الْعِشَاء She should not participate in the congregational prayer with us. She is not allowed to come to the Salat al Isha. فَلَا تَشْهَدْنَا مَعَنَا الْعِشَاءِ الْأَخِيرِ She could not come to the night, light, night prayer with us. يعني صلاة العشاء or any other prayers. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the Quran, وَلَا تُبِدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّا Do not bring out your beauty and adorn yourself when you're coming out. Cover yourselves. Also what I want to speak about is the women coming out for Salatul Eid. The women coming out for Salatul Eid is uh, also, uh, according to some scholars, it is obligatory for men and women, even the women who are al-huyab, uh, the women who are on their menstruation, that they also have to come out, and it's obligatory. And the large amount of scholars, or the large uh, number of scholars, they hold the opinion that it's uh, highly recommended that the women and the men all come out, even the women who are on their menstruation, they come out, to participate uh, in the uh, Eid celebration. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was narrated in the hadith, Umm Atiyah's hadith, she said, قَالَتْ أُمِرْنَا أَن نُخْرِجَ الْحُيَّضَ يَوْمَ الْعِيدِ وَدَوَاتِ الْخُدُورِ فَيَشْهَدْنَ جَمَاعَةَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَدَعْوَتَهُمْ وَيَعْتَزِلُ الْحُيَّضُ عَنْ مُصَلَّاهُنَّ قَالَتْ إِمْرَأَةٌ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِحْدَانَ لَيْسَ لَهَا جِلْبَابٌ قال Umm Atiyah anha, she said, we were commanded uh, al -huyida, umirna. We were commanded. When the Sahabas, they say we are commanded, this hadith takes hukm raf'i like the Prophet said it, alayhi salatu Who's going to command the companions? Like Umm Atiyah, when she said, umirna, we were commanded, who would command them? The scholars hold the opinion that it's the Prophet who's going to command them. That's why the hadith takes hukm al-raf'i. وَلِذَلِكَ الْعِرَاقِيُّ He said in his alfiyah, قَوْلُ الصَّحَابِيِّ مِنَ السُنَّةِ أَوْ نَحْوَ أُمِرْنَا حُكْمُهُ الرَّفْعُ وَلَوْ بَعْدَ النَّبِيِّ قَالَهُ بِعَاصُورٍ عَلَى الصَّحِيحِ وَهُوَ قَوْلُ الْأَكْثَرِي 
قول الصحابي من السنة أو the statement of a companion that this is a sunnah نحو أمرنا like his statement we were commanded حكمه الرفع the uh, hadith becomes مرفوع ولو بعد النبي قاله بعصور even if he says it so many years after the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام على الصحيح وهو قول الأكثرية and this is the strongest opinion according to a large number of scholars so Umm Atiyah said we were commanded to bring out who? Al-Huyyada, the women who are on their menstruation that on the day of Eid. Wadawat al-Khudur, and the women who never come out, who live and stay in their inner chamber, we were also told to bring them out as well. So what are they going to do? Fayashhadna Jama'at al-Muslimin, they're going to listen and participate in the uh, congregation. And they're going to participate in this uh, gathering that the Muslims have. And they're going to uh, enjoy this moment with the Muslims. They're going to participate in all of that. You see? And then a woman, she said to the Prophet, O Messenger of Allah, لَيْسَ لَهَا جِلْبَابُ إِحْدَانَ لَيْسَ لَهَا جِلْبَابُ Some of the women, they don't have no jilbab. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لِتُلْبِسْهَا صَاحِبَتُهَا Her friend, her sister in Islam, should share her jilbab with her. If there's a Muslim sister who has two jilbab, let her give one jilbab to her sister to enjoy this moment and to come out. And he, she doesn't have no jilbab. She's still told that she needs to come out. That's why some of the scholars took the opinion that it's, that it's obligatory. That is what I wanted to share, inshallah ta'ala, in this episode and in this uh, particular lesson. Uh, anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaytan, and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.